Welcome, Omar. How you doing, brother? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good, bro. Doing good. How are you? <laughs> Very well, man. Very well. Enjoying, enjoying Bali. I thought, you know, I'd come, try and come professional today for you, man. Where's your podcast studio, dude? I thought you're not going to make an effort for me. Oh, man, this is actually my podcast studio, like it or not, actually. This is like one of the extra rooms in my house. Okay. And right now I got like a couch there, a desk. I got some lights I need to put up, uh, some like phone that's coming. And there's actually a DJ deck right under you that you can't see. <laughs> so this is like a bit of everything here, but in progress, in progress. Not as cool uh, as yours, obviously. Well, now I, now I eat my words because now I feel bad because you actually do have <laughs> set up. I just can't see it yet, but we'll do a, we'll do a round two uh, when it's all set up. But um, dude, like super excited to get into this because, you know, we've got so many similar interests. Um, for, the, for the peeps, do you want to just do a quick intro of yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, hey, obviously, my name's Omar. I'm uh, based in New Zealand. Spend regularly time between, you know, Dubai, Singapore, a bit of Turkey and Europe. Um, I run a private equity fund. So, you know, right now, as, as we're recording, we're sitting around 5 million assets between property, crypto, stocks, startup investing. What else, man? We've got so much stuff going on. But um, e-com businesses, obviously, right? Like we we'll buy, grow them, uh, sell our stake, et cetera. So, yeah, working on that, obviously, before that, it's all over the place, which I'm sure we can dive in and talk about like similar experiences that you've had and I've had, but you know, an, e an influencer marketing agency that I ran back in 2015, got that acquired, then moved into venture capital, did that for a bit, moved in e-com agencies. Um, and then, yeah, last year, gone to crypto full-time into DeFi, NFTs, that whole shebang. I think that can be just a whole nother three hour chat in and of itself just the experiences that year but uh and then this year yeah just kind of consolidating it all into into a private equity fund and kind of going taking it from there so yeah pretty excited of on, and how we're going i guess i think i think the thing i i love most about it, and i think i may have mentioned this when we first connected is like for, like for what you've achieved obviously at your age is obviously extremely exceptional but then it's just like the way you present yourself is just so like it, it's it's I think I said this to you like real real talk like most of the PE guys I know are just like kind of kind of dicks a little bit or like at least like a little bit arrogant right whereas like the way it's it's so clear like how you've integrated this into your life where you're very like come across as very just like open have a lot of humility um behind all of that right and I want to I'd love to kind of understand how old are you again just remind 25 25. 25 right okay so to to have achieved what you've achieved like a five five mil kind of um fund right at 25 years old was there a stage previous to this where you went through like thinking you were just the absolute shit because i don't know how i can't imagine that you're not having that stage right like talk to me a bit about that <laughs> <laughs> i love it i, I love that um, very good question. I think a very interesting topic. Uh, I mean, first of all, I appreciate all the kind of words. Um, but, and I guess that's why I kind of, you know, I reached out to have continue these conversations because I absolutely felt the same about you, the way you carry yourself and, you know, some of the philosophies you have and the discussions and the interesting chats we have. So, and, and with other people. So appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's interesting, man. It's last year was probably the crazy year, like I said, because before that, it's, it definitely was like a complete 180, right? Like taking it from like a rock bottom scenario where, you know, I had my fair shelf. Like I'm already, I was born in Kyrgyzstan, right? A Central Asian country, tiny, and uh, then moved, moved around the world, but then eventually settled in Turkey throughout primary and middle school. And, uh, you know, throughout there, then came to New Zealand. But then there were times where you know, couldn't, couldn't afford to pay for school. Uh, so I started actually kind of trying to pay for my own school while I was here throughout, throughout high school and university. And then, you know, times where I actually couldn't finish my degree because it was so expensive. So I had to, you know, start working, like going to retail jobs and, and kind of working there, obviously, to kind of supplement, be able to pay rent. Uh, times where, like, I'd nearly got deported out of, out of New Zealand because <laughs> I uh, couldn't, like, get my visa, couldn't get a working visa. So, um, you know, kind of nearly got deported. Well, didn't get deported per se, but, you know, didn't get a visa. So I had to leave the country. And um, can you still hear me, by the way? I feel like there's a bit yeah, of a... Got you. You're okay, cool. As long as I'm fine. Um, 
Yeah, and then you know, couch surfing with my friends, like negative five hundred, six hundred dollar bank balance, like trying to live on Domino's pizzas. The New Zealand are like five dollars. I got to deal with five dollar pizzas, so just living on those. Um, so yeah, it, it went through kind of really rough times, but last year was probably where it really changed. Because I got a good career before that, right? I got into venture capital, got into e-com, but last year is when it just I probably put in um yeah yeah like about three five thousand dollars like between three and five and it just jumped so crazily over the year and that was that was an experience i don't think i necessarily went through a like a crazy phase but i definitely like it was a crazy mind shift of suddenly going from like literally at the supermarket right like you're choosing the cheapest thing to to suddenly being able to go my dream car forever was a tesla Right, like I never was a big fan of like Lambos, Ferraris, like nice cars. But for me, I was like, I always wanted a Tesla. So I was like, since Tesla first became a thing, and I went and bought that. Uh, wanted a house for myself, right? So I could get dogs, put artwork, like just decorate my house. Bought a house, um, travel. So I was able. So suddenly, I was able to kind of afford everything that I've wanted, and like that was that was nice. But I don't know, man. I don't think this dance you're looking for. But I don't think I didn't go through a crazy phase where started splashing and it, like I did go through a phase of just started buying designer clothes started buying like nice watches but not a phase where I think and I think it comes with location right New Zealand is so small in the other side of the world I feel like if I was based in Dubai or maybe Los Angeles or London I think it could have gone very differently <laughs> but I think being in New Zealand being so small probably like grounded me in that sense because uh, you just don't have those opportunities really to do crazy, crazy things, right? At most, you go out and you rack up a thousand dollar bar tab for your friends, and that's like a crazy night out and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, long story short, I, I don't think I went through a phase, but it definitely was a lot of difficulties where, you know, I went to therapy to kind of reset myself of shit. Who am I? What am I doing? What do I enjoy doing? Where do we go from here? Type, type thing. So, therapy was very helpful, but yeah that's now I'm, I'm in a much better place so i went through a bit of a phase but not a crazy while out phase per se i guess <laughs> yeah dude it's it's so interesting to me right because for you going through that so many people would have it would have been totally different like it's it, it's almost like when someone um i don't want to say i use the example of winning the lottery not that you won the lottery but in the sense of like accumulating wealth very quickly more in that yeah. sense right where yeah. it's such a quick, like like you said, it was a very fast in terms of time transition. So on a night, so you obviously mentioned going to therapy. So I love that. I, and also I said this on the first time we connected as well. I love just how I like open you are about stuff. And to me, what that shows is there is like, there is no like insecurity, right? Uh, we all have something to a degree, but like the fact that you can say that shows that you are secure in yourself. Right. Because so many and obviously like I coach a lot of guys, a lot of men and like pride and ego are two barriers to entry to actually be able to grow. Right. Because the ability to like if you want to grow a successful company, ego really is going to like keep you poor for a long time <laughs> in short. Yeah. And so it really, it just really feels like you, um, maybe it's big, like, obviously you give, I love that you give credit to your, to your upbringing and then like going through all of those things, which of course is going to affect you. Like similarly for me, dad coming over from Africa, having to start losing everything in there, having to start all over again, seeing him just work gave me like a level of, I guess, just, just a different outlook on life, right. Compared to other people perhaps. But when you had that shift, because I, th I just think it's so interesting uh, for because I'm personally interested. I think it's it's cool for other people as well because it's it's so unique. Which is like you had that crazy year, like you described it, and then it it felt to me like there was almost this like disillusion of identity because things are so different. So like, what was that process like of when that happened and you saw physically your reality change? Like you got the car, the house, the numbers were very different. How, what was that like process like for you, like internally? Yeah. And um, it's, it's, it's a, I think, so I guess to go back to your initial point, right around ego and all of those things, that's, I think we having come from that crypto space, especially where money is made very easily, very quickly, uh, and similarly lost very easily and, and, you know, very quickly, 
uh, I've seen people genuinely just lose themselves, uh, lose their humanity, right? Like just uh, not caring about friendships or, 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 or you know, their, their future, right? What their reputation is or will be like just for another hundred thousand dollars or another X amount of dollars, right? X amount of dollars, like a figure that will just change them. And seeing that, I think definitely made me realize like, shit and that was one of the reasons i kind of really shifted towards more of a private equity structure and diversification because if i stayed in that space full time like just continued on um i don't think it's it's a healthy space per se um even though again big crypto maxi i think future is bright etc cetera, etc cetera, given the current market regardless but just this insane bull run that we just had created some very nasty people so an ego was a big driver of that, right? And and this notion that you know it all, you're better than anyone else, and and all that, and that actually what you're doing is very difficult. And when in reality, it's it's almost like winning the lottery, right? If not basically similar. There's probably a few extra steps in there, but but again, it's very similar. And a lot of people get into this delusion that actually what I'm doing is very very hard, and I need to, you need to be a genius to do it. That's why I'm doing it. You're not, but it's not that and people kind of lie to themselves again to this this headspace where you know i my friends who i live with or, or that that i know who might be working you know, nine to five probably work harder than me <laughs> so like harder i guess if you if you want to talk about like the, the 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 grind right and that you're going to work in front of you on your feet all day all that stuff um like now i'm just taking calls and on, on my laptop like there, there are levels to it so you know i think i agree with that ego part but um I guess around the disillusion part, it's, man, there's so much in there, like a big, and I don't know how you, like if you've shared similar thoughts, I'm keen to hear uh, about you as well. But for me, it, I literally thought, okay, what do I enjoy doing? Like, do I actually enjoy business? Like, do I enjoy e -com? Do I enjoy investing? Who am I? Like, what drives me? What are my passions? What do I, what do I enjoy doing? Um, what do I care about? Um, you know, what is important to me in life? All these, like, it's an onset midlife crisis in a way, right? Where you just go, who am I? And a lot of that was driven because I was so focused on just this one goal, right? Like horse blinders, just, I need to make some money I need to get myself out of this situation. I need to be able to help my family get out of their situation, right? Because my dad um, who passed away when I was 18. He, uh, you know, racked up a lot of debt, put it, my family into, into a hole. And then when he died, my family still had to kind of go through that phase. So being able to try and fix almost those things, right? And try and be the man of the house and help them out. It was, that just became my goal. I just became blinded with that. So having kind of building my identity around that, when you suddenly achieve it in a way, right? Where you suddenly go, okay, well, I'm fine now. Uh, I can pay for my sister's university. I can buy my mom, you know, whatever she wants. And I can, you know, make sure I can retire her, which I did. And, and, you know, when that happens, you suddenly go, okay, well, what do I like now? <laughs> like, who am I, right? Because you, you're just not focusing and thinking about those things. So it, it was a very big stock night and day, almost kind of like switch that flipped. And it put me into, you know, depression, anxiety, nausea, like just constant nauseous, like nauseous feelings. I don't even know where that came from, but, um, you know, like all these feelings surface. So therapy really helped from that sense. Like I said, like being able to talk, not just about what happened recently over the past year, but, but around, uh, you know, my childhood, my upbringing, like why do I think certain things and all of these things, not, not a clear direction of, well, what do you enjoy? But just being able to talk about and, and come to terms with these feelings and being able to articulate them helped me then move on to, okay, great. That was a part of my life that is, and we're entering a new chapter. So let's start figuring out these next steps. It's okay if I don't have the answers now, uh, let's kind of keep chugging along from here. So anyway, I felt like I talked a lot, but that's basically the, 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 the mindset shift that happened and the process I went through. It was very, it, it was very night and day, but I think it was a necessary step. Otherwise, I think, like you said previously, I, if I didn't go through that self-reflection journey, I think I would have just gone down the path of, great, I made some money, let's just splash it, let's do all this stuff. So I think that that self-reflection aided the self-growth that followed.
one of the questions you uh that came up when you were having that like early midlife crisis as you uh beautifully articulated it was who am i mm. what did you come up with as an answer to that I, I don't think i know still but um i think some of the things i really came like understood was that a balance is so important in life and it's based on um where you're at in your life and the reason i'm saying is that if three years ago someone told me balance is important i would have told them no <laughs> i need to just keep focusing on what i'm doing now and work on this so definitely right now i can say balance is important coming from a place of comfort but but if if you are also perhaps let's say you know you've accomplished certain things you're at a good space in your career you're still young you've got your health and you're still kind of blinded into this thing maybe maybe take just taking a step back but i think it's more relevant to some of those people where okay well you don't have to grind to just be able to pay your next rent all that like if you if you're past that stage i think it's a bit more relevant if if, if you're still in that stage maybe balance is not the right answer to, to be able to get out of that but you know like for me i I figured out that balance is super important, you know, and, and there are a lot of important things in life that make it worth not just the, you know, obviously not just the financial success and all that that comes with it, but the, the relationships, right? The romantic, the family, the friendships, uh, the people that surround you, being able to like, I'm very lucky to have to be surrounded by friends that, you know, I've been friends with since I was 12, 13, or even younger, some friends in Turkey since I was like seven or eight. And whenever I, whenever I go there, same dynamics um that's super powerful right because you're able to surround yourself with people who who care about you on a deep level and and like you can't buy that so like some of these things that are so important that that you kind of figure out um and having a like being able to ground yourself in things that are bigger than you that like for me for example when i went back to kyrgyzstan last year and seeing the apartment building that i would spend the summers in right and um the, the playground that we had there's like this rusty metal playground same playground right from this like soviet era and you're like oh damn like i used to slide down there and think like what am i what am i gonna do in the future and uh you know playing tag with with the with the kids in the neighborhood with stones like you'd throw a stone and be like you're it like, you know just like realizing and just really absorbing that helped me really ground myself and reflect on damn sure there's still a lot of things i want to achieve in life but when i look back that eight-year-old would would trade the world to be in the situation i'm in now or oh, three years ago when i was three or four years ago when you know i was at my friend's house and very generously they allowed me to stay in their you know on their couch they didn't have a spare room on their couch for free uh i would have i would have killed to be to be in the situation i'm in now so being able to reflect and ground yourself in maybe your heritage your your family just something bigger than just your career or or the next monetary thing or your car etc i think are super important and super valuable so so those are some of the things i've learned so not necessarily an answer to who am i but i guess i've learned more about things that are important to me that 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 i'm being conscious of those things rather than um you know being blinded by just one thing and you know so i think all those things come come together in, in a sense I love how about that. you who are you who are you <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because that is the first um question i go into uh in my in in quantum mind with the with the guys i coach mm. and the reason for that is because most of us have no idea right yeah. but the purpose of the question isn't to figure it out it's to go on the journey of and pursuit of trying to because most of the time we live unconsciously, we have no idea what we're doing, what we're doing, right? Maybe it's like you said, at that beginning, it's you're at that scarcity line and it's to pay rent. And literally that's all, you, all you're trying to do, right? It's to create, it's to survive. And it's really a, um, a privilege to even be able to ask that question, yes. right? And so this is why I like to uh, deeply contemplate on it. I do have an answer for it. However, I'm not going to, say it the reason why is because i encourage i always encourage people to question it in themselves first and see what comes up for them um my answer is probably a little bit more like spiritual and esoteric it comes down to it but it's it's evolved over time to maybe get to my current um understanding of it um nice. but i but one thing i will say is that when when you can start to detach 
from the material i.e who am i okay well i run i'm this is my name this is my business this is who the people are around me most of most um of the time existence is lived in that realm right if you if someone was like who are you usually you just say your name and what you do right and the thing is with all of those things is they are all finite they will all stop at some point they won't last forever um so the question is okay well then what's what's beyond that and yeah without getting too weird and mysterious mysterious like that's what i'll say on it because I, I think i think it's like i like to let people unwrap their own presence and and sort of uh you know come to their own questions and realizations but yeah if anyone's got any uh if anyone's got the answer to that drop a comment below and we'll uh we'll see what you guys say um so one of the, what I'd love to do as well is circle back around to those early days. So when you were in the more like probably more the more like hustle grind, like I just got to make shit happen, right? Because I think that is a um, in today's day and age, we talk about balance and we talk about all of these things. And I'm a huge proponent of those, like the integration of like the masculine and the feminine parts of you are essential. And at the same time, it's like if you're if someone's listening to this and they're like, yo, I can't pay my rent next month. It's just going to go over the head, right? There's a time yeah. and a place for everything. So if we re rewind the clocks back to maybe that first business or when you were building up that influencer marketing agency, um, yeah, what what was your what was that process like? What was your day like? What was your just like way of see, perceiving the world back then? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I love yeah, I love the way you, you answered who or who who you are uh fully agree man it's just uh, that's the that's the standard that people go to usually it's like hey my name is omar and i do this but yeah it, i think as long as soon as you can start thinking well what is important to me what do i enjoy doing what do i want to bring to the world etc those are some of the more interesting things where i feel like you discover your inner self not just the surface level self so um yeah, yeah i agree um i think yeah, man, those early days, it's uh, it's crazy. It's, oh, it does feel like night and day in terms of kind of where I am now in terms of my mindset and, and the way I approach things versus then. And I don't, I'm not saying one is better or, or worse or right or wrong, but yeah, it's very different. I think back then, when I look, at, look back at myself, I was, I just, I woke up and went to sleep with just one thing in mind, right? It was, what can I do today or tomorrow that is going to be helping me on my journey to the, you know, this goal that I have of being able to lift myself up to a situation where, where I'm happy and, and content, content is probably the right, right word because you're never true, like you're never always happy, right? So happy is not the right word, but content with, with my life and how can I get to a stage where, where my family is taken care of, right? Like that was the goal. That is what drove me. And that is what I thought every day, like I, I could be with, I could be with friends somewhere thinking, okay, well, damn, like maybe instead I could be doing this side business where I could be making some money so that maybe that can help do this, that, that, right? So the sharks were just always turning at looking at opportunities. So I guess to, to bring that back to a more general level, I think having a, having a goal, people talk about having goals, but having a goal that is just like you, that you almost, you know, you not you live the goal, right? Where you like everything you do, you're trying to drive yourself towards that goal. That's where uh, that's the stage I was at. I'm not saying maybe do this, do that. I'm just on my experiences, but for me, everything related back to that. <laughs> everything I did, right? And um, opportunity is a big part of it, right? So always looking at the opportunities of if if I meet this person, what can happen there? um if if i go to this event what could happen there and because a lot of people are typically a bit more closed-minded right it's like oh why would i go to that event it's it's going to be full of x amount of people that i don't like let's say a business event or a conference or something uh why would i do that or, or etc or why would i go and work at this startup the, you know i was working this garage startup throughout high school um and and you know why would i do that i was learning coding i didn't want to be a developer like but it was just so such a cool experience to work in a garage startup the guy who had started it was an ex-silicon valley guy who worked, was very high up helped like a microsoft develop a lot of early tech and he was in new zealand working on a startup and you know working there and thinking okay well this is not what i want to do but what could this add to me that is going to eventually help me towards this goal and taking on things that, that propel you. So I was fully ingrained in that life where 
uh, you know, it was always around that. And a lot of things, funnily enough, happened because of that mindset shit, right? So um, like a good example is when I was working a retail job, I, some guy and his wife came in and they were looking for clothes. I'm helping them, you know, the standard. And I could kind of sense, I could hear them speaking in Russian. And I know Russian through, you know, my mom, grandma from being from Kyrgyzstan. And I just started chatting to them. I'm like, hey, like I know Russian too. And we started chatting. And as I'm checking out their orders, he, he asked me, oh, well, like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a student here. And you know, at the time I was studying, uh, like my year where it was like shaky. I wasn't sure if I was going to stay in the country. And he was like, oh, well, I'm an immigration advisor. So here's my card. Obviously, you're an international like student. If you ever need any, any help, let me know. I was like, great. So I took that. And, you know, in a way, a year later, when I had all these immigration issues, I, I needed someone. Like, I can't, you can't, like, if you're just applying for a visa, sure, maybe you do it yourself. But when immigration is telling you no, and you're trying to battle that, you need, like, a professional. So uh, anyone I spoke to. It was, you know, it starts from $20,000, $30,000, right? Like they don't help you for free. And I reached out to him, explained my situation. And thankful, you know, like massive appreciation for, for Bojan, Boyan is his name, uh, where he kind of took me under his wing. He's like, look, like I got sons your age and this is so unfair what's happening to you. I'm going to help you in this case. And long story short, years after battling, we got my visa, came back, obviously. And it was that moment where, in the retail shop. And again, I was working at that retail shop because I was like, well, I need to be making money. I've got these e-commerce stores on the side, but that sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. I need a way to be able to pay rent, do all this stuff, right? So going to work, that's A, like opportunity of like, well, I need to do shit. So getting off my ass, doing something, but also B, putting like putting yourself out there, right? And it's tiny things. So it's like, great, they ain't speaking a language, I know. Let me start talking, let me go. Let me get his, you know, he gave me his card. Let me get in touch with him, see where it goes. And without that interaction there, I don't know if I, my life could be so different because I maybe might have not stayed in New Zealand. In Turkey, I would have probably gone to military service. I probably would have stayed there because I couldn't afford to come back here. Like, I don't know where my life would be. So it's almost these butterfly event situations where one tiny thing, because you have this mindset of, I've got this goal I'm trying to achieve. I'm looking out for opportunities, trying to connect with amazing people, how I can add value to them. That was also another thought I had of how do I add value to them, right? Like how can I be helpful to them? Because if I'm helpful to them, always like there's a reciprocation that typically happens. Not doing things because you expect things in return, but you know, if, if I can put my foot out forward and say, how can I help you? Or what can I do for you? Uh, then then the conversation becomes a lot more kind of naturally flowing. Right? Anyway, a bit of a, a bit of a side, but that's that's it, man. Like for me, it was all around these these little snippets of having a major goal, always driving towards that, being open to opportunities and taking them. Like just t- dropping the ego, taking the opportunities, and um, you know, walking down the when we had our influencer agency, we would walk down Wellington, capital of New Zealand. We're there, and we'd walk down the the main street and walk into stores, saying, "Hey, like." we're like 18, 19, we're like 19. And uh, we're running this influencer agency, by the way, it's like this new thing, it's 2015, New Zealand didn't really have much of that. And with this new thing, we can get like people our age to talk about your brand, are you guys interested? Half of them told us to uh, fuck off, right? Like, but, but the few that were like, this sounds cool, let's talk. We got our first clients from there. That helped us kind of grow the brand from there, right? So it's, yeah, it's all about those opportunities, the goal to have to drive it to them. And, and um, yeah, man, it's, long story short like that was basically where i was at back then it was it was a lot of that 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 thinking i love that man and and what's so interesting to me about you specifically is like you in a way that mindset is still there it's just developed in your openness to connecting right Mm. like you don't you don't need to connect with all the people that you do in order to just be successful right you are already that yet you still have this very open to connect kind of mindset and just attitude about you right and so I love how that was a consistent theme Um, it's funny for me like I remember walking down like Regent Street in London which is like the kind of prime shopping street when I was probably like 17 just going into every shop it was different for me back then because I didn't have a business I was literally like asking people for if I could work for them and these are like massive like you know brands it's not like you just kind of walk in and be like hey can I have a job but I would do that and I ended up getting a job at um Hamley's which is like a kind of like a famous toy shop and just by first of all being there it like 
just opened up my world because I was like, oh, wow, like I can go and just put myself out there and like good things can happen. Right. And this is the, the thing I say to people who are starting out, like I even a, a guy in Bali I recently connected with, he's like runs a organic, um, like short form content marketing agency. Dude just documented his journey getting to 10K a month. And like the thing I loved about this is right. He's not there. Right. So most people would never even want to share their journey. However, he's doing it because he wants to be able to document it and then also look back, right? And see like, oh, cool. Like, look how far I've come. But because he's doing that and because of that openness and that almost like degree of just being open and vulnerable, I was like, dude, dude, let's sit down and I, I'm going to support you. Like, and we're going to create a roadmap for you to get to 100K a month. And the reason I felt like I wanted to support him was because of that openness, right? And because of that, just like getting out there. And then when I circled back around, I was doing that job in, in Hamley's led to so many opportunities. I then got a job at like Abercrombie because someone saw me walking down the street. And then that led to going to, you know, these crazy parties, which then led to me having this openness around like, well, there's this whole other side of the world. Right. And it's just like, like you said, it's like this butterfly effect from one thing to another. And it all starts with just kind of embracing the unknown, just putting yourself out there. And I think we live in a digitalized world now where it's so easy to just sit behind your computer and make money that it's no longer a necessity to connect. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, we need we literally needed each other because, you know, you had to, you know, milk the cow to bring me the milk. I had to like, you know, I don't know, like mine this rock to create some sculpture, whatever. I don't know how far back we're going here. This is this <laughs> situation. But you get what I mean, right? We literally needed each other. Whereas now it's like you can order food to your door. You can have entertainment by watching Netflix. You know, you can, you know, watch porn all day. Like all of these, all of these things are so accessible and essentially are like just destroying humanity in a way, right? It's, it's, the, it's the matrix in a whole. And so that I think is a really big takeaway for people to listen to what you just shared there because it it showed how it led to where you are now right and it just started with that initial effect um one thing i'd love to ask you as well it, it sounds like you've um intentionally surrounded yourself with um just really great inspirational people and leaders um was that was that always like a mindset of like wanting to essentially be around like mentors or like how did that develop and how valuable has that been to you yeah yeah absolutely um yeah, I mean, that butterfly effect, I think, is is such a large takeaway. And it's, it's funny because you don't notice it in the moment. You only notice it when you look back. You look back and go, that moment actually changed my life. But in the moment, it's such a small thing. And life is just full of those things. Like, I don't know uh, what, like, you don't know what small things you're doing now and what effects they're going to have in the future for you, positive or negative, right? That's why I'm always such a big proponent of just doing small things day by day right like just do small little things that are good because they add up and there are butterfly effects like world the world's full of those butterfly effects um so 100 i think that that the ability to and connect you know putting that ego aside trying to help people that man that's that's so important but um yeah the connection part i think it was a it was a conscious choice from from pretty early like i definitely always tried surrounding myself from people okay, a mantra that I always had like a thought process was I always want to be the dumbest person in the room like if Dude, I'm, if I'm, I'm exactly the same man I literally yeah. am exactly the same yeah you can yeah. You, you learn you grow as a person in those in scenarios like if you're constantly finding yourself to be quote unquote the smartest person in the room right you're thinking you're the smartest person in the room everyone wants to connect with you you're like the big dog all those things uh, you're not growing anymore like you, you're stuck uh, so so forever I've always had that kind of mentality and I always want to surround myself with people where which which who pushed me who who inspired me who and hopefully I could as well but I would rather if I had to choose be in a situation where damn like I know nothing in this scenario and I want to learn so much than them being a scenario where everyone's praising me right like oh wow oh my you're so good you're so what so that was always a thought and so I did always try and go about it. It was, it was a conscious decision to not bring that into my personal life though, right? Like in my personal life, I always thought of it as I want to be with people who I have good connections with, who, you know, I have fun with, who not in a detrimental way, but, but who are just get along with, have fun, you know, we care for each other, good friendships, solid friendships. We do things together, et cetera. 
like I didn't look at my personal life from a well, what value can they add to me, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I think that's an important part. I think a lot of people, especially in this kind of entrepreneurship, business, agency, content creation, crypto, e-com, whatever, that space, uh, get lost in that. You know, they I find often a lot of people can I get to meet, they will have the surface level of, of amazing people they're surrounded by, but and it's all based on work, right? It's all based on that 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 common thread of okay, great, we're all creating things, and that's awesome. But I feel I find it so important to to have this other personal life where you are surrounded by these people that know the real you, right? Like they know that you can just go cry to man, and they'll be like, man, you know, I get you, and 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 have those like deep chats. And you know, one of my best friends, uh, we've been friends since like twelve and thirteen. And when I first came to New Zealand and, uh, you know, he lives in another city, but every now and then we'll, we'll catch up. If he's up here, I'm down there. We'll put on some like music and we'll just like freestyle. I'm shit. He's good at it. But, you know, we'll just like do stupid things. We're like in a real, real scenario. Like I would never do that. like God forbid. Right. But, but we just be stupid, silly. Like we just relax, have fun, talk about life, like how he's doing with his girlfriend, like what situations he has in his family, me, et cetera. So I think that's, that that was something I conscious to try to keep in mind because I didn't want to just surround myself into this fake life of great. I'm surrounded by these people who are doing great things and great. I'm learning from them, et cetera. But again, like life isn't just that. So it's important to have, again, that balance where you have these, these close people to you um, and, and then you do still surround yourself with those people. So it was very helpful. Like I said, like being able to work with some really smart people all the way from my, my day ones uh like when i was in an influence marketing agency surrounded with people who are who are super kind of driven motivated um potential investors who were kind of listening to our pitches kind of connecting with them adding them on linkedin like my linkedin was like on point from like maybe i was since i was 15 like i was like i need to polish my linkedin i need to be connecting to people like it was like 15 like people you know are just doing whatever and i was like my linkedin's gonna be good right like, <laughs> So it was all around like those connections, connecting, like as soon as I connect, messaging them, being like, hey, like, thanks for connecting. Is there anything I can do? Like, let me know. I'd love to catch a coffee, et cetera. And I think that's another reason why I just understand that. And I never see myself as too big to give my time to anyone, right? If someone's connecting with me, I see that genuine interest, passion to want to just talk about something or, or, or you know, like chat, get advice, whatever it be. I try myself try and make myself available whenever I can, because I don't know, you know, what situation they're in and where they might end up with maybe just half an hour of my time, right? Because I've had people like that, that I spent time with where, you know, maybe not just not a, a single person, but each one of those like half, half hours that they've given to me, probably hundredfolded, right? It probably propelled my life like hundreds of hours forward. Uh, and and that's so valuable. So I always try and give that back as well in a way because um, you know I think that's, that's super important. So yeah, I think like I think surrounding yourself with those people is is really really key. Like my mom would always say like you know tell me who your friends are, I'll tell you who you are type of thing. Like I I, I, I agree. I like depend. Like, my mom's a G by the way for saying that. <laughs> yeah 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 man she she's wise. But um it's like not the not the friends part. I think tell me who you're surrounded by and I'll tell you who you are. Right like. Who are you surrounded with? Like, what do you do? Uh, what's your what's your regular thing? And there is like a I'm sure there's a sigma meme in there somewhere about like you know surround yourself with just grind and hustle and that's what it, that goes back to that balance element, right? Like don't confuse it. Surround yourself with amazing people, but also just you know have that have that rock as well. I love that, dude. It's um, yeah, it's it's interesting with with friends and for me, like I'm at a stage now where was I, I moved to Bali a couple months ago. A lot of my friends are also, it, it's beautiful because a lot of them are also actually working in similar industries or, or things that supplement it, right? So it's just this now, like we go for dinner or we go to a party or whatever. It's like, yeah, we're there to have fun and connect and just free flow. Like you said, just be stupid and be silly. But then we're also like lifting each other up at the same time. And it's, this is something I've only truly started to experience in the last like 12 months to be able to have it in that way and it just makes just like this people talk about like work-life balance my view on it is like work-life harmony and how just mm -hmm. how can it all like flow together how can it all just like integrate right so 
it's interesting like that's all, almost the way i like with the load so many of the people i surround myself with it's just like we have such similar interests mindsets we challenge each other and it's just like it's it's like constantly being in a mastermind but like in the sense of like we're just always like lifting each other up it's it's really just so beautiful because every day is just expansive every day there is growth in some area and i really believe that it's it's not the the goal yes is if it's a goal like in your sense where it's like i need to do this to like you know make sure i'm financially taken care of that's different but generally with goals they're kind of arbitrary right they're kind of just something to aim at i exactly. i believe that it's really the the progress of each day knowing that you did a little bit better that you increased in some area of your life that brings that like real satisfaction you know um I wanted to ask you as well, you said about friends and, and I really like how you have your day ones. I think that's really, really cool because those are the people who knew you and loved you before you are like where you are now. Right. And so that brings me on to the question is like, how often do you find people want to connect with you just because they want to like take or get something from you or like try to be like a fake friend? What's that been like for you? Man, honestly, like... I think my radar when it comes to that is, is quite is decent, I suppose. So like I typically, you can't, you can typically see it. Right. And I try and depends on who the person is. Right. But, but if, if I can still see that it comes from like a good intention, like they just want to connect. So maybe like, cause they're working on something similar and they just want to like learn more about something then absolutely. Like not that I'm just going to become best friends with them, but I'll give that time. I'll hang out, whatever. And then try and help them in a way. Uh, maybe it's just, maybe it's a downfall of me. Maybe I'm just being too giving with my time, but I know I've always approached it from that angle, but yeah, if there's a nefarious intent, I tend to uh, kind of shut it down pretty quickly. Like I I'm, I've always been a, big person around um boundaries so i got my boundaries and if you try and push them then that's it like i'll, I'll just well, i'll just okay cool see ya bye so um thankfully though luckily maybe i haven't really witnessed that a lot uh sure there's been maybe you know more people who are reaching out to me that like i remember from high school that uh you know we'd never even were friends to begin with i'm like okay um but again like if there's no ill intent there and they just think it's cool and they want to talk more then sure like let's connect let's chat um so there's nothing 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 has really screamed at me or like oh there's some ill intent here they're trying to use me or something um and if yeah if anything maybe on a night out like a completely random stranger and in that sense then i just kind of shut it down like hey like nice to meet you see ya. uh don't really go down that path so luckily actually no i haven't really had that um maybe it comes with the territory of being in new zealand right uh i'm sure if i live in maybe like la miami i don't know somewhere like that it might be a bit different i think it depends on the culture as well but so far, no, man, I, I really haven't experienced it. And it's nice, I guess, not to experience that. That's that's amazing, dude. Yeah, that that really is beautiful. And again, it's like you attract who you are in a way as well, which again mm. says a lot about you. Like like your your mom, which is still like the most G thing ever. Like show me your <laughs> show me your friends, I'll show you your life kind of thing. It's really the same with with people, right? Pe you're clearly a giving person. So you would a lot of the time you attract people who are also like that of that similar similar mindset and i was literally just having this conversation yesterday about how just surrounded by people who all want to lift each other up like there's um a project that i'm i'm going to be involved with as an advisor and like everyone there they're all doing incredible things in terms of like success and business but then they also just genuinely want everyone to be elevated and when it comes from that intention and that purity it's like that seed just just grows and grows and grows and grows. And I think that's the th that culture, whether it's in an organization or a company or just like a group of people is just the best, just the best thing to be around, man. Um, yeah. So, so, so for you now, like what is your because because you're obviously like focused on the investing, but then you're also involved. I'm guessing you have like involvement in these businesses that you invest in. Right. So what does your yeah what does your like time look like now what is it spent actually doing yeah it's it's, it's i like it it's just no day is kind of like the other so that's beautiful about it 
um it's it, the a beauty of it is also that it combines all of my passions and, and experiences and skills in a way right like it, it combines the e-com experience that i've you know i've ran in com, com business myself also worked in in the largest e-com agency in new zealand that is like globally 400 450 staff working with our major retailers enterprise level software enterprise level migrations etc so having that experience and then the venture capital experience, the, the startup experience, the, the crypto experience, you know, the, the, the stocks experience, like, so bringing all of them together, because in a way, those were all my passions at one point in my life, or like I've had it, but I'd moved to something else, but I've had that. So being able to combine that is amazing and the fun. Uh, I got, I'm right now, again, come back to surrounding yourself with people. Like my goal for next year, realistically, is just creating the best team possible. Like, again, it might just be a unrealistic goal almost, but I generally just want to create the best culture possible within, within our fund, within our organization where, you know, you're, everyone's valued, everyone's going above and beyond because they want to, uh, because they're, type, they're that type of person. Uh, and, and they're getting that back, right? Because a lot of times like you're expected to give it all your all and make sure we'll give you a salary and cool, you know, get on. Maybe we'll have a little, um, you know, little, little corporate event every now and then to, as a thank you. Um, so I, do, I, def, I definitely don't want to go down that path. And so next year for me is definitely like all about hiring, surrounding myself with like amazing people, um, et cetera. But yeah, now, man, it's, 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 very different you know in the mornings i'll usually take a few hours to just trade some crypto um like between 8 30 to 10 30 11 30 depends on how the day is going the market's going but take a few hours just trade and then uh go do some admin like see who's booked what in my calendly what meetings i have for the day uh etc elia uh, and i i've also met through tribe Elia and I have been, you know, Elia's been an amazing connector, has been connecting with so many amazing people. So, you know, look through all the calls, Elia, Elia and I will catch up. Um, maybe I'll catch up with, with, you know, the board of directors in one of the e-com businesses I'm in, or, you know, catch up with my e-com admin guy, who I'm trying to make my general manager look overseeing all the e-commerce stuff, because he's just an absolute weapon. Um, you know, like catch up with them to see kind of check-in, health check-ins as to where, what's happening, what's, if, I, if he needs any help um you know and then and then if again like depending on where i'm at like right now i've just invested into an econ brand so uh for me now it's all hands on deck like i don't want to just hand it off to staff to to be like all right just implement the regular stuff i want to usually when i invest in a brand or acquire it the first few months i just give my all myself like from an operational point of view like i'm sitting there creating the email automation flows or installing the apps configuring them you know whether it is upgrading the review system loyalty system um facebook ads google ads looking through what that's looking like how what can i add here change here, do differently so from an operational point of view i'm typically a lot more involved for the first few months of, of the especially the e-commerce investments uh, startup investments as well like typically once I do invest for the next like few months I'll be pretty hands-on like for a few weeks like we'll catch up every other week with the founder to just be like hey like how's it going is there anything I can do then obviously it goes into quarterly kind of reporting structure but um, also try not to overextend like obviously if I invest in a startup they know what they're doing so I don't try and get a in that as much as the e-com stuff but but still try and keep more of a hands-on approach and I guess the beauty of it is also our funds relatively small. Like if you think private equity, you're typically talking hundreds of millions, if not billions. So a 5 million private equity fund is relatively small. So next year we're also doing a raise because right now, it's, you know, so next year we're doing a raise, try and bring another few million. And so getting prepared for that deal flow, networking, chatting to people. Do they have an e-com site that they're looking to sell? Great. Let's chat. Send me info. Let me look. It's a good opportunity. Great. We'll go in. Uh, typically try and close things in like a week like if it's if it's of interest oh. um investors potential investors meeting cool people like hey like by the way next year we're raising around here's our investor deck if you want to kind of let's chat uh if you're are you in dubai great i'll be there next month let's kind of grab a drink chat etc so yeah it's it's very different man so i kind of want to give you like a hey like every day is typically like this to this but um that's that's from the work perspective like obviously from another perspective 
breakfast like i last year i wasn't eating breakfast i was like 10 kgs it was horrible so breakfast like lunch dinner little protein shakes gym like all that stuff still kind of goes on catching up with friends uh because in a way i think that balance again balance is important where what's the point of being your own boss right like working for yourself having that flexibility if you're not using it right like if, if, if you're if you're if you're working for yourself and you know quote unquote the dream wow but you're actually putting in like a 7 a.m till to 8 p.m day every day six days a week then like whereas like sure the benefit of then you're growing a business blah 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 but like take take a Friday off, right? Because you can afford to, or like don't let anyone book anything for next Friday or there's something, a great event happening that you want to go to do it. You know, like, so that's how I approach it. I'm not sure if, if, you know, everyone should approach it that way. And nothing I'm saying is people should do it this way. But for me, I found that to be also pretty helpful is every now and then I'll just take a day to, yeah, like catch up with some friends I haven't seen. A friend is coming from another country. I'm going to spend some time with them. Like I'll just won't let anyone book the meetings that day you know, calendly, nothing there. So yeah, that, that tends to be the kind of day to day, a bit of, bit of everything. I like that, man. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just interesting to see, I think for people to see like what it's actually like, because what it does is for people who are like tuning into this, they can see like, oh, like this is what Omar does on a day. And it's like, oh, like maybe I can do that too. And it like starts to build these connections of like, oh yeah, that seems actually quite possible right and then it this is the stuff that i think is even more powerful and inspiring than like like you said like them just giving specific like mm -hmm. you know do this do that and at all the points in my life as well it's been the same just by seeing the way other people live who inspire me in in some aspect it just makes you realize like oh it's possible and this is what changes you know, your thought processes it changes the way mm -hmm. you feel it changes your belief systems of oh it is possible right? Because you can have all of the skills. And this is something I see so much today. Like all the guys we work with are online entrepreneurs, right? And you know what it's like in the space. There's just there's a course for everything. Like actually there's a hundred courses for everything, right? To solve, try and solve the same problem. So it's it's not a, an information issue. It's a, it's actually an application issue. And mm -hmm. the reason why I see so many guys, like if they're struggling to say like they want to grow their business, right? Which is obviously like prime at the at the front of any guy's head, right? To live that masculine imperative, grow the business, provide for the people around them. It's it's almost always because of something internal, right? It's almost all because of like a mindset, a past experience, a quote unquote trauma that's still running in their day to day life. And I found by just working at that level, on the personal level, on the subconscious level everything else just has a way of of fixing itself because like you know the thing i always say is internal state equals external reality and the reason i found that to be true is because whatever we're thinking and feeling inside typically dictates our actions and then what you know reality reflects back to us um so Believe yeah man it, yeah it's it's very um yeah, I I, I, th I really feel like this is the kind of stuff, at least for me, this is the stuff that lights me up. You know, I think this is the yeah, stuff like, that. Like, that's exactly what lit me up back in, you know, back then. And like to this day as well, right? It's, it's not someone saying you should do this, 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 this. It's, it's, and I think the reason we see a lot of that is because that's what people want, right? People want a magic pill that tells them if you do this, three magic steps, you will become a millionaire or you will lose weight or you will gain weight and become muscular or you will do this like they want three steps or whatever they want step by step if you do this 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 you will achieve x y z and i've found and i'm i don't know how you find it but you know life doesn't really work that way there are no steps that someone else has done that you can exactly follow that will yield the same results everyone's lives are different everyone's backgrounds are different everyone's opportunities given to them are different right if you're uh, you know the opportunities i had thankfully being in new zealand are different than opportunities i would have had if i was in turkey or are different than opportunities I would have had being in Kyrgyzstan, right? It can even be like a locational issue sometimes. So I think it's 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 not fair to say, do this, 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 and you will achieve this, or you can do what I did, because that's not that's not how it works. Everyone has different different aspects to their life. Everyone has lived such different lives. So I, similarly, what I find 
for myself very helpful. And I think typically people should or would find more helpful is hearing, you know, stories of people and, and you know, how they do certain things and thinking about how that applies to them and whether they want to kind of take that on board, right? Again, like the balance thing, for example, for me, that is what's helping me right now. For you, that might not work given the where you are at at the time or et cetera. So I think, I think 100%, having organic conversations like this are so much more valuable, I find, than, than just uh, do X, Y, Z type thing, right? Because, yeah, that's just not how it goes. <laughs> yeah, literally all the best things that happened in my life happened through a conversation, happened at a dinner, happened by just coming together and being like, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what you're doing. Oh, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And then it's just like, boom, growth, mm. you know, through through those connections. It's re- and. It's just such a much more fun way to live. Like I was, I was literally just making um like a short form piece of content to basically just tell a little bit about my story so people can get context for who I am. And I realized like there were these pictures of me at my uh at, you know at my standing desk with my Herman Miller chair. And my, it's funny because I'm now in like a similar kind of setup to that at, at this moment in time. But back back then I would you know just do this every single day, the twelve hours a day, just in the room girlfriend at the time was like are we ever gonna like you know mm. like have a relationship like all of these things right and it's this like being the lone wolf mentality has been glorified because entrepreneurship has become like a almost like a freaking like fashion accessory or something like you know that you just sort of take on as like a lifestyle and um, while it can reality. <laughs> you know what I mean like it, it can provide an amazing lifestyle but the reality is is like if that's the only reason you're doing it, like you're not going to get past that initial phase where you need to, you need to put that work in, but it doesn't have to come at the expense of doing it alone. And that's the thing that's currently glorified to an extent of like hustling constantly 24 seven in your office. And that's it. And I think the reason like a lot of young guys particularly subscribe to that, I I did for a period of time, like I'm consciously because I saw like, this is what other people were saying. But the reality is, is like what I always say, everything that I share is don't listen to me. Like if it resonates with you and you want to go try it and then see how it works for you, go do that and go and and test it yourself. Because like you said, you know, those three steps in that course or that piece of content are guaranteed not to work for you in the same way it did for the other person. It's It will not happen that way because you're because you are different. Right. And this is a really good mentality shift for you know to to kind of have which is like instead of looking for the solution or the thing to follow create your own think outside of the box try be dare to try something different because that's how you'll get the different results to everybody else you know Man, beautifully beautifully said and you know like especially when you said you know do it do something of your own and you also use the word um you know instead of just following these steps Following is a very good word there because that's exactly what ends up happening. And the results you will get will be you're just following in someone's footsteps. So you're never actually leading your own path. You're not actually creating your own journey in this. You're just kind of hoping that someone guides you blindly, right? So you will never get to whatever your stage, you know, wherever you want to get by just doing that, right? Like everyone who has kind of gone through some sort of enlightenment I guess is not the word but like you know has reached that stage where I had these goals and I've achieved them how great they've done it in their own way like no one has done it by just following something else or someone else blindly so fully agree like it's about listening and getting inspiration from various sources books audiobooks people podcasts chats you have movies documentaries like getting that inspiration, implementing certain parts of that that you believe in into your life and seeing how that works out. And if it works, like if it, if it adds a benefit and positive to your life, great, continue doing it. And if it doesn't, then cool, try something else. Like keep, keep trying different things. Maybe you're not pulling inspiration from the right places, go to somewhere else. And, you know, and that's why I think we've seen this rise off uh, you know, courses for sales, but everyone is selling a course or, 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 you know, this rise of like gurus, et cetera, that people just blindly follow because, because of the glorification of this lifestyle, I think people 
immediately go and it's, i think crypto has played a bad horrible role in this of like these stories of someone just buying a random coin and overnight becoming a millionaire and then you know people take advantage of that so we've seen there's demand for it obviously because otherwise people wouldn't be doing it supplying it but the demand is there because of this glorified lifestyle and everyone's just expecting i want someone to tell me and i'll do it and i'll also be like that but that's not how it goes and i think the sooner you can realize that the sooner you can reach those goals. And that's what I see typically across, like a common thread is that, like when I look at you, when I look at some other very successful, very young guys, right? I met, I met this guy called Simon, he's based in Miami. He's you know working on $50 million plus leveraged buyout deals in private equity. He's 22, right? And him and I had amazing calls, like chats for a few hours, just on the phone. We're like, hey, I know I called for an hour, but can, can we continue? Continue? And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing chats and common thread between him, you, like people who've done amazing things at, at a relatively young age, I suppose, is that it, they, they've, they have realized that this, like they've realized the fact that you need to carve out your own path and not just blindly follow other people uh, sooner, right? <laughs> so the sooner you can realize that, the sooner you can reach those goals. And that, that's the common thread I'm seeing. It's like people are go, go, great, I loved or love, for example, you know, I loved reading Steve Jobs' biography or Elon Musk's biography or whatever it be like. I was a massive Elon Musk fanboy throughout like my 18, 19s <laughs> looking back. But, um, yeah, and I pulled inspiration from that at the time. But I didn't try to blindly follow it, right? So similarly, the sooner people do that, that's the common thread I see is, uh, is don't follow something or someone blindly a step. Take, broad, take inspiration, but implement it in your own way, in, into your own lifestyle. Couldn't agree more, man. Um, question for you in regards to investing. So when you're looking at investing in a company, um, let's say it's a startup, outside of just the like financial model side of it right what are the things you're looking at like how do you make those internal decisions as yes this is something i want to invest into um very different criteria depending on what it is right? like my e-commerce criteria is probably different than my startup criteria than my crypto criteria but i guess let's take two examples right e-commerce startups maybe for startups it definitely is very around the founders right like who are the founders are they you know again this is not always a checklist per se but some things like it doesn't mean that all of these have to be there but you know things that that add to a good decision i find is is um you know the founders what are what is their background have they worked on a similar field for example before uh, do they have the necessary experience or knowledge in that space uh for example if a random dude off the street that's trying to create uh you know biomed startup you're, you should probably question it's like well why <laughs> like how what skills do you have to actually make this right that's an extreme example which most people would agree with but uh, the niche also applies to that right if someone is a founder who's worked in whatever a SaaS platform before or they've developed a SaaS platform and now they're creating another one great that has a bit of credibility there so you know the founders their backgrounds they've worked in a similar field before um Honestly, that's number one for me in, in the startup space. Like, I just look at, okay, who are these people? Are they, like, what's their personality like? Do they just have the vision to drive this to a place, uh, et cetera? And obviously everything else comes, right? So if we're not going to talk about the financials. Like, obviously, if the valuation is too high, probably not. If, if you know, the money raised is going to get too, dil like, my, if my equity is going to get too diluted in, in future rounds, then probably not. Uh, you know, preferred shares versus not, like, yeah, so there's a few more financial criteria that go in there, but from a non-financial point of view, I'd definitely say it's about the founders and maybe number two would be, I guess, the niche they're in, right? If someone's going to say, look, we're creating a Uber for XYZ again, it's like, okay, well, it, it, this is a dead horse that's been beaten to death twice. So it's, it's you know, then maybe, maybe not, unless it's something revolutionary, I guess, but even then... <laughs> So, you know, it depends on what niche they're in. So is it going to, is it like a niche that's growing? Uh, does it have a future or is it, it's kind of like a dying, dying niche or like what space are they playing? It's probably the, the second thing that I usually look at. So right now I'm really heavy into FinTech. I think financial tech is just going to keep growing and growing and growing throughout, um, you know, throughout recessions, throughout bear markets. We typically see like after it, 
we typically see an increase in financial literacy because people get burned, right? People go, oh, damn, like I lost my money that was in the bank. Like, why did that happen? And oh, the bank collapsed. Okay, well, okay, why did that collapse? Financial literacy typically tends to go up, right? Because people just get burned. Um, so that obviously when financial literacy goes up, people typically tend to want to uh, bring in things into their own hands, right? So using uh, apps that allow them to invest in shares, using apps that allow them to invest into gold or maybe crypto or whatever it be like, anything around fintech where they can start to bring some of their power back, uh, I think uh, tends to happen. So right now I'm very kind of heavily into fintech in the startup space. Um, from an e-commerce point of view, I think a lot more things that go into it are purely financial. Like I don't even have a favorite niche or something. I will go from buying a rug store to investing into a beauty skincare company to, you know, so it, I don't have a niche preference per se. Um, I do like recurring revenue, right? It's something that people can keep buying. Amazing, great, uh, good product. People keep buying, that's awesome. Uh, valuations are super important. The, what's the EBITDA multiple on, on the brand? Like typically you're looking for a two to three uh, times on the profit, right? So if it's anything more, like you need to justify why is that? If it's anything less, justify it again because they're giving it for a steal. Why are they giving it to you for a steal? Um, you know, looking at a bunch of different metrics, um, and what's the average order value? What's the returning customer rate? Uh, and the, if, they have, if they have an email database, that's IP that you can reuse to generate more revenue. What are their, is their traffic purely based on paid? Like if they're making millions of dollars a month and but they're spending $600,000 on ads every month and then their profit margin is 20%, like you, they're actually not making that much. So, but if a brand is only making $100,000, but it's purely organic, they're purely driving it from email and organic. They don't, they're not running ads. That's a way better opportunity because then you can start also start to run ads and bam, like you're, you're, you're off the races. So, you know, looking at, so like there's a bunch of things I can keep talking about, but I think the e-com side is a lot more numbers driven for me, but the, 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 e, the startup space is a lot more, I guess, macro and founder specific. I love that, man. So, there's so much value in the things that you shared. I don't even know if you realize it because it's so natural to you, but that's epic dude and i've got a couple people to uh a couple things were coming through just on a personal note of people to connect you with after this so remind me at the end i've, just, I've made a note as well um okay cool man so I'll, I'll share i'll share with you something about myself and i'd love to hear your reflection so sure. basically obviously i've been in the like whole like personal development space for about like 10 years now so it's always just been my obsession and my passion it's always the thing that just lights up my soul when I get to like talk about it or share something with someone and I just see that revelation in them to me like that is my currency you know when somebody has that transformation and so for myself I've always been just so inspired and obsessed with finding out like okay like what is a like a method or what is some kind of process to create this transformation and basically from studying and just going through many different modalities I ended up, it was actually earlier this year, um, this was coming off the back of a breakup, um, working with a shaman. Now, this wasn't a shaman in terms of like ayahuasca and plant medicine. I have done those things before, but this was purely like a, literally, literally like a connection like this, where it's speaking and, and kind of like an energy exchange. And basically, I was put in contact with the shaman because it was said that any kind of limitation inside of you any trauma anything that's essentially holding you back can be released like this in an instant and i was like mm, all right well we'll see about that like you know like therapy for example that was helpful for you for some people they'll do that for 10 years right to be able to have that have that revelation but the person who put me in contact was highly trusted probably one of the few people in the world that i would truly like trust the recommendation so i was like okay cool I'll I'll do it. I'll book it, book this in and work with this guy. And basically through this process, I was able to release essentially all of my, it's going to sound crazy, but like all of my limitations, whether it was around like self-worth or like parents' divorce, which caused this belief or this trauma, like all of these things that came up, right? And I went through this session, it was about two hours and I came out the end of it, having released everything and just it's the closest thing I can describe to taking a limitless pill is basically the way I'll put it. And it completely changed. It was one of those paradigm shift moments, you know, when you, I just saw the world in a different place. And so 
basically he initiated me into how to do this because I said, look, I feel so called to this. This has got to reach more people because he's not really like doing it for the business. He's just doing it because this is his like calling from like God, the way he sees it. And so anyway, I started um, taking people through this process. I've never, this is the first time I've ever talked about this publicly, by the way, I've only done this um, just privately up until now with people who are in need or just like students. And I basically had the idea to like, okay, well, what if this could be a process everyone could do themselves? What if it mm. was something like, it's not me jumping on one-on-one, -on -one, but it had access to, to this. And basically I thought, okay, how could this work? And then I thought, okay, well, look at like how apps like Headspace and Calm have transformed the space for meditation. Now meditation isn't just something for spiritual woo-woo people. It's used by top level executives. It's used by parents. It's used by children to enhance their quality of life. And so the way I kind of saw this was like, it's like being able to let go, being able to release, um, essentially like the Headspace version of that, right? Something that's accessible to people. And to put this in a process that somebody could just, yeah, like, oh, this thing happened. Cool. Go through the process, release it 10 minutes. And now I'm good again. And basically, like, this is my like wider, wider mission. This is like my vision. I believe that if we can deal with our own shit, then people are just going to be a lot better to one another. I think it's how we raise the collective consciousness when people are operating from a paradigm of ultimately like love instead of fear. And so, yeah, basically like that's the thing I'm like chipping away slowly at the background um, from your perspective, from um, just like the experience you have, like, I'd just love to hear, like, what do you think of it? And if you have any uh, advice or words of wisdom, I'd, I'd love to, yeah, love to get your two cents. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, first of all, I think that's a really cool, really cool thing that you're trying to implement, like something that's helped you to, to bring it to, to other people, right. To, to kind of share that. I think that's, that's super powerful. Um, I mean, I, I, for me, for example, like I, I wasn't against therapy per se, but I was, I always thought it didn't really, it wouldn't help me. Right. I think a lot of people approach it from that angle where I don't need it. I'm, you know, it helps other people. It doesn't help me. But I truly, truly, like, it's genuinely, I so believe that any, it, it, it can help anyone. And um, so, so um, you know, like, that process for me was, was super helpful, like, just being able to go through that. And I think people who realize, like, I think people first have to realize that don't just immediately kind of put the blinkers on and go, oh, well, they're talking about spirituality or they're talking about this, I'm, I'm gone. Like be more open to just kind of hearing about things. And like, for example, I'm just even reflecting right now. Like if you told me this maybe a few years ago, I'd have been like, man, that's a bunch of bullshit. I was like, cool. But like now having gone through that process myself, not the, not the same one, but you know, therapy for me, I, I do think um, like, damn, like, that's cool. Like maybe, maybe like it's obviously helped you, right? Like, so, so why can't it maybe help someone, some other people? So uh, like, that's a big, big, big why I see things is, you know, don't be closed off to, to trying new things, to trying new ideas. Like for me over the past year or so, I, I still wouldn't say I'm like super spiritual or not like not in a, in a bad way. Like I think um, not that there's a bad way to do it, but I don't think I am maybe as spiritual as you, for example, right? But I was at zero. Like, I was like, no, I'm like, oh, if this is fake, like nothing helps me, blah, blah. And I think to a degree, we need a, an element of that. Like everyone needs an element of that in their life. Like just being able to, you know, just believing in something like bigger than yourself. Like don't be so ego egotistical where you just believe, yeah, like I'm, I'm just me, like there are certain things that happen X, Y, Z, like there's the fully analytical, logical thinking, right? There's elements of, of all this other thing that there's so much we don't know. So be open to trying new things and experimenting them, see if they work. Like if they don't work, great, it didn't move on, but, but maybe it does, right? So the trying different things, like a lot, of, a lot of that I'm trying to implement into my life now where if previously I might've had an immediate reaction as to, nah, man, that, that ain't gonna work. I'm more open to it. And it, it's almost approach it from a fun angle, right? Like just implement fun into your life. Just go, let's try it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? Like, like just give it a go. And like, maybe it goes. And like a good example is when I was road tripping around Turkey recently, a very good friend of mine, she joined me in certain parts of it. 
and um, she's very big into tarot cards and readings, right? And and she does it all the time. I still couldn't get on board with that. So I was like, okay, like sure. <laughs> and I was like, man, just do it. Okay, let's give it a go. I kid you not, some of the things that came up, and it's like completely random, right? She's just shuffling a bunch of cards and throws it in. Like just some of the stuff that came out was so accurate that I was like, man, like this is a bit, this is a bit spooky. <laughs> like, so now it's not that, and again, it doesn't mean that I've got to have this complete shift where now I'm just every little thing that happens in my life, I'm like doing tarot readings. But it's, it's you know, if I'm just chatting to her about a bad thing that's happened in me, you know, in my life or that day, and she's like, oh, let me just do a quick tarot reading. I'll just let her do it. And and depends on what she says. I just take, I just go, maybe, you know what? Damn, okay. It says something good will happen. I'll take it. I'll like, it helps. It puts you into that mind, mind, mindset of being more receptive to things, right? Like being more receptive, implement it from a fun angle. Um, there's realistically no downside to it, right? You just, you're just enhancing your life. Uh, don't be so closed off and arrogant to think that you know everything. And I think a lot of people approach it from that angle subconsciously. I don't think consciously everyone thinks I know everything, but they believe that, well, like this thing that helps other people wouldn't help me without even trying it, right? And then I think a, a lot of life is like that, not just this kind of therapy, spirituality angle, but a lot of things. Oh man, like that guy made millions, but it's because he probably had a rich parents or he probably had did this or, you know, he caught the crypto wave where, you know, it's never going to happen again. So like, why would I even bother? Like, there are always excuses as to, you know, knowing you think, no, you know that, okay, like I can't do that because it's obviously not, doesn't work, but like, you know, give it a go, like try it. The same with business, you know, like, sure. Maybe that person had a fair disadvantage then find out what fair disadvantage you can use now, right? Like if you were to think about like crypto now, sure, maybe it's a bit of a funky space, but man, like stocks were like that back, back way back, right? And then before that, there were other crazy opportunities where people took advantage of. So jumping into these things with an open mind, I think is, is the angle here. So I think it's a great idea, man. Like genuinely, uh, if it's helped you, why shouldn't like no one is like super unique right like everyone's unique in their own way but like if something's helped too it probably can help other people so like damn like i think i think that's that's amazing awesome dude no i appreciate that man and and i think that's what it is right it's that open-mindedness and that the sense i really get is from seeing just all of these different companies in the space now like people are becoming so much more open-minded particularly like the young like our generation of people to different things like a couple years ago for you to be talking about doing um therapy like live would have been like whoa like are you sure you want to share that there would have been all of these connotations around it whereas now it's like generally in most countries like accepted or even encouraged in some kind of ways for men to talk when you see studies about like suicide rates amongst men like they're the biggest the big, biggest killer of men under 40 is themselves right through suicide and a big part of that is because they just don't have an outlet right they don't have the um capacity or kind of space to be able to actually share what's going on inside because there's all this like internal pressure built up where they feel like they need to just bear the weight of the world on their shoulders and it's just beautiful to see like this different space we live in and what i've loved is just seeing like taking people through this process and then just seeing them like you know maybe they'll just have a release and like tear up or maybe they'll have this like re revelation or just suddenly like see the world differently after it's just so beautiful to, to see that transformation and i think like for me personally like that is what raises that's like what raises the consciousness of people right it's what just like makes humanity a little bit better you know i want to say like fucking every every fucker out there wants to like change the world and make the world a better place it kind of has lost its um you know its <laughs> potency now <laughs> but yeah. You know, I think I think we can all individually do something which starts with the self, which starts with taking responsibility for our own life. And then once you've done something, once we've done something notable that has made an impact, then sure, like, why not go and spread that gift with the world? Right. That's the way I see it. Exactly. And changing the world is actually such a big topic that for me was a big thing. Right. Again, like similarly, 
I remember like always telling, um, like, again, like people would be like, what, what would you, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to change the world. I don't know how I want to change the world. And it was always this thing. And I remember my mom keeps reminding me of this because she loves to do it. Uh, she will say, like, I remember she was like, I asked you what you wanted to do in like five years or something um, to me when I was, I was like 15 or something. And I remember, and apparently I told her uh, that I want to change the world in five years. Otherwise I'm like a failure, right? Like I just like, that's the type of thinking I had. And, and even through my revelations early in the year, like it was almost this case of like, damn, okay, well, I've achieved my own goals, but like, I still have that, like, I want to change the world type thing. And a good, very nice discussion that I had uh, with her, but the therapist and, and a lot of like interesting people is the conclusion really comes to like changing the world means so many different things, right? In a positive way, when we talk about in a positive way, improving the world. It doesn't mean, you know, in my head, it used to mean like creating the next Apple or creating the next, you know, Google, whatever it be. And actually, funnily enough, as time goes on and we see how these tech companies kind of go, you're like, oh, did that actually improve the world to a degree, right? <laughs> so there's a bit of that. But, uh, you know, that's what it meant for me. It was like creating this global billion dollar company. Like that's how I saw it as changing the world. But something happened to me that that really kind of sold, drove that point was, when I was back in Turkey, my primary and middle school that I went there, they, you know, they invited me to come and speak to the children there. And, I, you know, there was like a thing. So I go up, I'm chatting about just my life, my experiences, and didn't think much of it, really. It was just another day, a bunch of like, you know, 10 year olds, not 10. Yeah, I guess from 10 to what, 13 or something. And the next day, my mom and I were at a shopping mall and this kid and his mom were walking and the kid comes up to me and he's like, oh, like with the mom. And it's like, oh, you're Omar, like blah, blah. And the mom starts talking to us. And apparently that kid was, goes to that school, saw it, like heard me. And then like went to his mom, like at that day, at the end of the day, I was like just talking about how like that was so cool, blah, blah, blah. Like I want to now do this, blah, blah, blah. And like the mom was just thanking us. And like seeing that for me was this almost a revelation of like changing the world generally just means if you can impact just one other person's life in a, in a positive way, it's changing the world like you're changing the world right like if and if like this chat we're having if someone watches this and goes actually like shit okay like i actually want to change this about me and then that leads to something else a butterfly effect right something happens that then doesn't mean that they suddenly become a billionaire but like their life goes from maybe just not being happy with their life to now being happy with their life damn like great we just changed the world again now right like by just impacting that person because they are going to impact another person it's just like chain reaction so i like it's changing the world is this interesting thing where it doesn't have to be this global scale because butterfly effects and chain effects actually mean that this one little thing like that you do in a positive way to someone else you are changing the world right and like you can see that first hand often like you know someone might message you be like hey like that was real cool and like, i recently wrote an article about like my experiences and all that and i've had a bunch of people message me be like wow like that was so cool kind of reading your experiences and the vulnerability and kind of all these things and uh, you know so, like someone else messaged me saying like actually this was real cool like i want to start implementing some of these things i'm going to read some of those book recommendations you had and like i don't know where that goes but like if it goes well like sure if like if i had impacted them positively that one hour i took two hours i took to write that is so worth it like that is what brings me joy and i feel like that's what brings you joy as well right like being able to impact these people it doesn't always have to be on a global scale i mean if we can that's even better but it doesn't have to be at that level all the time like if you can just impact one person you're good man like you're doing you're doing something good well, for sure man and i think it's something every guy goes through right wanting to have this like massive every every guy's had the thought of like i'm going to be this global enterprise you know billion dollar company doing doing this thing and it's like it's it's good to have that vision if it's your vision yeah. right because the question is is like where is that belief coming from is that truly internally what you desire or is it coming from you know seeing some guy on social media or looking you know looking at some celebrity and again if you want to use them as inspiration beautiful however oftentimes like our beliefs and desires are just coming from like random places like the schooling system like government like marketing like your friend Market. next to you who you know marketing is a massive one right your friend next to you who just said something to you and you just take it on because he was next to you right like what makes him qualified to to kind yeah. of dictate the direction of your life 
But oftentimes, like the the reality is, is that a lot of these inputs are not actually there to serve you, right? They're not actually there to lift you up. They're actually there to control you. They're actually there to, for example, marketing, like a lot of it's to make you feel less than, to make you feel inadequate so that you buy X product, right? That's why I had so much resistance to um, even like starting when I started my coaching business, I had so much resistance to doing any marketing because I saw like all of these coaches and just people in the online space, like prying on that, like lower mm. part of people. Right. And it's, it really does like, it affects me inside. Like I really hate to see that because I know what it feels like to be in a low point and be on the other side of it saying like, your shit, you need this thing to make you feel better. Mm. And so I just made like a promise to myself to say like, I'm never ever going to use that manipulation or do anything that's aligned to that in anything that I'm involved with. And that like that as, a, as an example is what makes positive change. And I think for people who are looking to do big things, it's like, like you beautifully said, recognize where you're already doing things. Because when you see like, by having that conversation by just smart, like I always make a point to if I see an old lady walking down the street, I'll always smile at her specifically, because she's not she's not getting those smiles right like mm. people like when she was young and, and beautiful and like you know like societally pretty every every guy was looking at her and trying to get her attention whereas she's probably not getting that now so like i'll make that impact because i know how much that will impact her mm. day and it's like sure you can't measure that or put that into a balance sheet however <laughs> like you can't do that with a lot of things in life right and so yeah just just my two cents in it bro um <laughs> Hundred percent agree. Like it doesn't cost anything to be nice. Like it just boils down to that. It doesn't cost anything, man. Like if you can, if you can just not be an asshole, I think we solve a lot of problems <laughs> in life. Like just, just don't be an asshole to someone. You know, like to people in general. Just try and be nice. Like try and uh, add. Like just smile. Like you said. Like do those little things because it all adds up. And when everyone is doing little things constantly. It, it becomes a big thing so it doesn't cost anything just be a nice person it's easier said than that obviously and i'm sure a lot of people not a lot but i'm sure some people would agree that like you know would think maybe i'm not a nice person sometimes or like but i'm not a nice person 100 percent of the time i'm sure so it's it's not bad it's not preaching but it's yeah just try and be more conscious of that like just do the little things it's it's, it's small things totally man totally all right i want to ask you uh one last question before we wrap okay so we're gonna project way into the future you know so far you've achieved like achieved all the things you've wanted to achieve you've made the impact you've wanted to make you know, beautiful family whatever your goals are in terms of that beautiful people around you and it's your last day here on planet earth um and so you can leave something behind to everyone like the people you love most the people you cherish dearly but it's not physical. So all of the material wealth you've amassed, you can't leave that behind. But instead, you can leave one piece of wisdom or one piece of advice or just like, you know, some parting words. What would you uh, tell them? Hmm. Good question. I, I actually recently wrote about this in, in the article I was writing. Um, so there was a study and I so agree with this. Like, I think I would, I would steal this. <laughs> As, um, so there's a study that was made. I'm, I'm sure maybe you came across it where a hospice worker interviewed like her dying patients, right? Like over, over the span of a year and was just talking to them about their lives, their regrets, what they would, you know, what they would leave behind basically. But like, that was not a hypothetical. That was real, right? These people were in palliative care, like they're dying in X amount of months. And, you know, she was just interviewing them, getting to know like their thoughts and then where they're at and what they would recommend. And the number one thing that they regretted, right? So this is the number one thing that, that across this, the survey of, of people, um, the number one regret they had was that I wish I lived a life truer to, to myself, right? I wish I lived a life true to myself than what is expected of me from other people. And that is so true like i i first of all i mean before kind of this year like last year was this crazy year this year was this kind of regrowth year for me but before this year i realized i was actually living this life that that was expected of me by myself 
not externally, right? My mom wasn't expecting me to look after the family or anything like that, but it was pressure I was putting on myself, but it was still this pressure, right? I was living based on expectations of how I should live rather than being true to what do I enjoy doing? Um, what am I good at? Well, how can I share this with people to create a positive impact, right? And what will people think of me if I do this? What will people think of me if I don't do this? How can I be liked by everyone, right? Like these thoughts that I think maybe it was a bit more extreme for me, but I think it's a human tendency, right? You want to be liked. You want to do this. You want to take the safer route. Uh, you don't want to go down the road less traveled because it's scary. It's out of your comfort zone. And, you know, if you actually look at um you know like human dna and like you know what what's what survival is like you don't want to get out of your comfort zone <laughs> because like, you don't want to stay within the tribe you want to stay within the cave you want you wander off too much there's danger there you might die right so like instinctively uh, like your body your being doesn't want to do that right so but i think so much growth and untapped potential in everyone lies outside that comfort zone, right? Is when you live outside your comfort zone is when you're actually growing. When you're in your comfort zone, it's nicer, right? Like it's, it's, it's nicer, it's safer, uh, it's, it's more comfortable. But that is not where you're actually growing and developing as a person. And this, is, this can be applied to everything. I'm not just talking from a business sense, right? I'm talking about, uh, you know, as a person, like you become a nicer person when you start to think about, well, maybe these actions I'm taking are not nice. Like, you know, people around me get upset when I take these actions. Being able to self-reflect on that is being out of your comfort zone because you're having to come to terms with, oh shit, maybe I'm a bit of an asshole. Like that's, you're out of your comfort zone to be able to do that. And that's where that growth happens, for example, right? Or, or you know, a lot of examples like this business is a, a clear, easy example, but doing things that, that scare you, right? Again, it can be something like, um, like for me, I always try and do this is do something like just do things that scare you. If the only reason I don't want to do something is because I'm a bit scared, I'll just do it. If that's the only reason, like stuff like you know, skydiving, maybe or climbing up a rock mountain, diving with sharks, stuff like that. Um, I'm a bit scared, but I'm like, God oh, damn it, I'll do it. Again, it's out of your comfort zone, right? You don't want to do that. Like maybe you're scared of roller coasters. Uh, very simple example. You're scared of roller coasters, etc. all these scary things. You just do it. Most of the time, people find that like pretty fun. Some people might not, but then you get a kind of a story about that, right? You're coloring your life story. Like you're not just saying, well, I woke up every day, I went to work, I worked hard, I had a family, and then I bought a house and did this and this, and I'm dying now. You're, you know, you've got stories about how you were, you know, in Egypt riding on the camels. You were then going, you know, you climbed up a rock mountain and you kind of nearly fell and cracked your head but thankfully you didn't and you were swimming with sharks and you were kind of scared but that was cool you were doing that while you know you were in turkey or you know you were riding horses up so like it, it adds color to your life right like it, it, so again being out of your comfort zone and like that growth happens there so uh, it's man this is such a long-winded <laughs> long-winded kind of explanation but i think that's what i would leave right because i find that just so true like for me, it's been groundbreaking and life-changing. Just like, yeah, like summarize, to summarize it is like live, try and live outside your comfort zone, right? Like that's where growth happens and live a life that is truly true to you, doing things that you believe in, doing things that, is, that are good for the soul, where you just genuinely feel fulfilled right? And it can mean business. Like I, I genuinely feel fulfilled and, 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 and happy with the work I do now. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't when I was doing crypto at all. <laughs> so, you know, like find those things that, 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 that add all of this to you and yeah, live outside your comfort zone, like add color to your life. Like we have one life and like take those risks, do things that are a bit scary, like it can be anything like ask out that girl that you wanted to, you're just kind of scared or, you know, go traveling, do this, do that. And again, like, yeah, live outside comes zone, man. Like, I think that's, that's what growth happens. That's what adds color and beauty to, to life. Oh, beautiful, man. <laughs> beautiful. I yeah. love that. It's, um, it's the kind of thing where people hear that 
right and and people are like okay that makes sense but I think for you it's you've done that like Mm. and that's what one of the reasons why you've yeah lived the life you have so far right and that's why I love that answer because you're an example of it right and that is what actually leads people to take an action on that right and like Mm. you said if one one person just one person hears that and goes and does something that is outside your comfort zone like what a win right what a worthwhile investment of time and energy so i just want to thank you bro like it's really been good like just great opportunity for us both to also just catch up and like get to know each other a little bit more and then you know share some share some insights as well um where can people find you if they want to connect with you uh yeah sure like i'm on instagram hazer h-a-z-e-r underscore t-r-n-z so t-r for turkey nz for new zealand um nice. otherwise i'm on linkedin omar hazer omar with an e like o-m-e-r hazer i think the url is omar hazer one so i think if you just type that into url that should come up um otherwise yeah we're still building our website for the for the fund it's called atlas ventures so nothing there yet um but that's what from what you will see like the best like the, the common joke is like the shitter the website of a private equity or a hedge fund is the better they are <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like, like i don't have a website yet but um yeah, like between Instagram and LinkedIn, I try and be pretty available. I'm on Medium as well. Like I write some of these articles on Medium. I think it's just, again, I'm a the one. Uh, so you'll find some articles there. Like I'm trying to write a bit more as, as kind of I go. Um, but yeah, that's it, man. I think the one thing I'd like to, I guess, if, if if I'm plugging it really is like with our venture, you know, with the fund, we're always on the lookout for for investments in the e-commerce space and the startup space. And you know, recently I'm also in a SaaS product. So if you've got something cool that you think ideally I like to also be in things that not just a monetary value add, but also you know, maybe my network, my skills, etc., can can drive a value add. If you think there's some sort of something there, let me know, reach out to me, let's chat about what you have, if we can add some value there, vice versa. If you're in a potential investor that next year when we're doing a raise, get in touch. I'll send you my like investor deck for our fund. Uh, we can look at that. But yeah, man, like that's that's basically all I'm across. But likewise, it was great to chat to you. Thank you for having me. Like it's it was good. I'm in Bali in March, I think. So let's catch up. Hell yeah, man. We'll do it. We'll uh we'll go on some cool trips when you arrive, man. I love it. Um and well, for anyone listening, I'll also link those links below. Um, if you want to find out more about Omar. Thanks, bro. Thanks. I appreciate that.